Okay, so um, this is the lesson on tissues. Uh, you need to be able to identify um, the difference between connective, epithelial, muscle, and nervous. Those are your four different types of tissues. Your tissues make up um, an organ. Um, and so like when we're looking at organs, this is all the things they're made out of. Okay, so um, that's the goal. We'll get in a minute. But here again, you can see tissues are made up of cells. So really what we're looking at today is what the shape of these cells are. And that's a great way to identify um, what kind of tissue it is. Okay, so the definition um, of tissues is a group of cells with similar structure and function. So we're going to look at the shape of the, sh the cell. Um, histograms, we'll be looking at those. Um, histo means um, tissues. You'll be looking at these. It's a microscopic view of tissues. Uh, slides will be underneath the microscope the next couple days, and you'll get to look at all these different tissues we're learning about. There are four different types, and what I've did, what I've done is I put one word with it to describe its function. So epithelial or very superficial, um, it's going to be covering. Uh, connective support, it's strong. It's like rope um, that like supports the entire. Um, uh, structure. Nervous is control, that's your neurons, and muscle is movement. Okay, so we're going to start with epithelial. Um, so the main three things, just a background information, is it's usually anchored to your connective tissue. If you take a look at take a look at this picture, this is your epithelial tissue here, and it's anchored to the, all this connective tissue. Um, there's no blood vessels here because uh, you shed it. Um, so protection is one of the first functions um, against, um, in this case, against bacteria and chemicals. And just as an example, inside of your uh, respiratory system, you have these um, epithelial cells that move debris out of the way. Uh, absorption, uh, epithelial tissues lie in your digestive system and they absorb all the nutrients when you eat. So like in your stomach, in your or I'm sorry, excuse me, um, inside of your intestines, when absorption occurs, um, that this is where um, there's these epithelial tissues that are in charge of that. Uh, filtration inside your kidneys, it filters. And secretion. So glands um, produce substances, uh, oil, enzymes, and mucus. So glands will actually secrete things and that's made up of epithelial tissue. Okay, so looking at the structure, um, the way that we categorize uh, epithelial tissue is by the, how many layers there are and the shapes. If there's only one layer, it's called simple. If there are many layers, it's said to be stratified, and the shapes as well. So let's get into that. So simple versus stratified is whenever that. So simple is just one layer, um, stratified is many. And then when you actually are looking at the cell, there's different shapes. If it looks like it's been squished, like you took the animal cell, which is circle, and squished it, and that's squamous, squished, squamous. Cuboidal is a cube. That's what these would be, simple cuboidal and stratified cuboidal. And columnar is like a column. It looks like um, a horizontal, like you took it and you stretched it vertical. Um, what you do is you put the two words together. If there's only one layer and it's cubed, it's simple cuboidal, simple squamous, simple columnar. I've supplied you with um, this diagram right here um, so that you can see uh, what each of these look like. So you have simple squamous, one layer that's squished, stratified squamous, many layers that are squished. So you want to go over each of these and say, okay, like this tells you like how many layers it is. So simple is only one layer, stratified are many, uh, squamous, the cell looks like it's been squished, cuboidal looks like a cube, and columnar, it looks like a column. Um, you can kind of see how these look here. When you are dyeing a cell, the nucleus dies darker and so does the membrane. So that's what you see here. So always this, that, what that little structure in the middle, that's your nuclei. Okay, so um, what does it look underneath the microscope? You do not have to know the function and exactly where to find each of these. Uh, you just need to be able to identify it in the microscopic view. So simple squamous, one layer, squished. Simple cuboidal, one layer, looks like a cube or a square. And in your notes, you just want to maybe draw a picture next to these. Simple columnar, only one layer, but looks like a column. Stratified squamous, it's most common. It's found in your skin. You see how there's many layers and it looks like it's squished all together. So it goes from here to here. Um, stratified cuboidal, I don't have a picture of that, but the columnar, stratified columnar, um, look for the nuclei. You see the nuclei here and here? There's two different cells here. So that's stratified columnar. So you can see two cells here and here. So those are stratified. There's more than one layer. Don't worry about location. 
<clears throat> so pseudo stratified columnar, these are like a weird shape, so you kind of you kind of can't tell where it begins and where it ends. Uh, pseudo stratified columnar, you always will see the cilia also. Okay, so that's little hairs that's on the end. So that's how you can tell it's pseudo stratified. Um, you see tons of different nuclei. You can't tell where like where the heck does one begin and where the other one end. You just can't tell. Um, I just put this as an example. Um, they're in places with like passageways, so like the reproductive system, like when the egg, when or for females, when you release an egg, the cilia will move the egg along. That's why those cilia are there. Okay, so now we're going to get to connective tissue. So right, so epithelial is always superficial. Um, it's on the outside. It's covering, protecting, um, and right below that you have all the connective tissue. It's holding the um, organ together. So um, just like I said, protecting, supporting, binding together. Um, so some terms that you need to know. I don't know why I chose this one. <laughs> okay, so um, fibroblasts. Fibroblasts actually produce structures of the connective tissue. So this is going to be an important thing to note. Um, they look like little dots. I'll show you in a minute. They make your collagen, your elastic, and your reticular cells. So fibroblasts make all of these. Your collagen I like to think of um, as like a rope. So in your t in your connective tissue you have this collagen. It's like these proteins and it's like really strong. Elastic is like a, a rubber band. It's stretchy. Like in your skin, if you take your skin and pull it up, right, it's kind of stretchy. It's because of that connective tissue that elastic. Reticular is what's in your blood. It just keeps the cells together. Um, if you take a, if blood, um, it holds together strong. Um, that's part of those reticular structures. So you have dense and loose connective tissue. So dense connective tissue is so dense that there's no light going to shine through in the microscope. So these are all pictures in, my, in the microscope. So um, there's no white at all. Um, you can, the fibroblasts are all these dark structures. Remember, they're making all the other ones, all the, all the other structures, like the reticular collagen and elastin. Um, but yeah, so it's very strong rope-like. So two examples are tendon and ligament. You need to know the difference between these. Tendon connects your muscle to bone. Ligament connects bone to bone. So that's the difference. Um, then you have loose connective tissue. Look how you can see through here. So remember dense, no, there's absolutely no white in here. Um, loose connective tissue, there's a lot of white, right? There's a lot of light that goes through the microscope because there's not a space, so it's loose. Um, adipose is an example of this, but you can, I like this picture because you can see the elastin, it's a little thinner. The fibroblasts are all the dots that's making everything else, and the collagen's like the rope, it's very thick. Okay, so now that we went over, so dense versus loose connective tissue, just in the microscope, knowing the difference, what they look like. Um, now we're going to get to the actual types more specifically. So we have fat. Um, fat um, is an insulator, stores energy. Like if um, you overeat, basically, it's going to store energy for you. So um, the idea was back in the day when it was a winter, um, you maybe didn't eat as much, so you uh, would store this energy for later. Uh, the subcutaneous layer of your skin, it's the, the bottom part of your skin. Um, so anyways, this is what fat looks like. It's or adipose. Um, a lot of space. It looks like bubbles, right? It looks like bubbles. I've heard crystals. I've heard all kinds of different things. It's pink in color when it dies. Um, and then you see like a lot of light shine through because it's loose connective tissue. Blood um, is another. Let me get this out of your way. Okay. So blood is um, another connective tissue. Um, it transports oxygen, carbon dioxide, wastes, nutrients, anything through the body. You, you can tell because they almost look like a, they, I heard bubbles. <laughs> um, these are white blood, these are white blood vessels here. Okay. Uh, later on, you'll learn how to look at the nuclei. Remember, your nuclei always like is darker. And these are all like other blood cells. Bone. Bone looks like a spiral. So when you look at it, you're going to see this lacuna that's in the middle, but it's so condensed that it makes this matrix. Um, it supports your muscles and organs. You'll learn more about all these different structures um, next. Cartilage is very similar to bone, except for um, it has a little, it's not as condensed, um, but you still have like the lacuna. Um, your cartilage is less hard and more flexible than bone. Um, it's your larynx or your voice box is actually made of this structure cartilage. Um, your uh, your ribs, there's part of your ribs that's made out of cartilage, which we'll look at later, and it covers all the ends of your bones. 
Okay, so now we're gonna get into nervous tissue. Uh, nervous tissue receives and conducts electrical impulses from one point to another. This is what your uh, receptors are made out of. They're, they are nervous tissue. Um, so there's there, so you can see here the sensory receptors here when you touch, like sense. Um, that's part of it. Your brain, your, your spine, your central nervous system, and peripheral. So the structure, um, you just need to know for this, we're gonna learn, this is unit three, but you just need to know that it's made up of neurons. and. Um, uh, it contains neurons in these supporting cells called neuroglial cells. We'll learn a lot more about that later. This is what it looks like in the microscope. Um, it's going to be like you're going to see the dark nuclei and then it has this distinct shape along the outside and it's surrounded by all of these small neuroglial cells. They all have different functions like they clean it, they protect it, they make the myelin sheath, they have all kinds of different functions to them. Okay, the last one is muscle tissue. Um, there's diff three different types of muscles. Uh, they can shorten and they thicken. We'll learn more about muscle contraction in unit two. Okay, so um, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac. When you're looking at the muscle types, skeletal muscle will look like a, a cylinder. Um, it's multinucleated and it's striated. So what I mean by striated, it looks like you took a knife and you cut it across. Smooth muscle, um, it looks like a canoe, I've heard, <laughs> um, or an eye, um, and we'll talk more about the name of that shape. Spindle is what that's called. So it's called spindle-shaped. Um, it's uninucleated, and it's not smooth, so there's no striations. It's smooth. Um, cardiac muscle looks very similar to skeletal, and there's a couple differences. It's branched, so instead of just be, they're cylindrical, but they're branched, and there's these structures called intercalated discs, and it's also striated. Oh, but I kind of put that on there for you guys. <laughs> so cylindrical cell, multinucleated, spindle shape, single nucleus in each cell. Um, and then this one has um, is the same as this one. It's just branch and has intercalated discs. There it is. <laughs> okay, so this is what it looks like in the microscope. So you can kind of see it looks like I took a knife and just cut it up. Um, that's that. Um, and you see like the cylindrical looks like a um, cylindrical just means like a cylinder or a tube. That's what it kind of looks like. Um, so where do you find skeletal muscles? Attached to bone and functions to move body parts and controls your breathing. Um, so that's where you find those. It's voluntary. That means that your brain says move your muscle and you move your muscle. Otherwise, your muscles just be moving out of control. <laughs> and That's not good. Um, striated, again, that means that you have that crossing. So we're t like it has those shapes to them, that light, dark and light cross markings. So you need to know where they are. If it's voluntary or involuntary, it's voluntary. And if it's striated. Okay, this is smooth muscle. It's called smooth because it's not striated. Um, you find these in internal organs like your uterus. So in the hollow internal organs. It's involuntary, so it cannot be consciously controlled. So, um, for instance, like um, your urinary tract, like there, it's it's pretty much on its own um, ways of being controlled. It's smooth because it lacks striations. The last one is cardiac muscle. It's only found in the heart. It's involuntary, it cannot be controlled. As you know, like your heart is beating and it has an intrinsic conduction system. Um, so you can't be like, heart beat fast, heart beat slow. Um, it's, uh, it's going on its own and it's striated. Okay, it contains these little things called intercalated discs. When you're looking in the microscope, you can see them. They are like a horizontal line. Um, and that's the last part there. Okay, um, they're branched. That's the main difference as well. You can kind of see like here, you can see the branching um, and you'll need to know. So for the muscles, you just need to know where they are, if it's voluntary or involuntary and if it's striated or not. Okay, and that's it. That concludes for tissues. Um, I will review all this stuff with you for the bell ringer tomorrow.